If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer this question on your own first before listening on. It turns out that we can solve part A using the work kinetic energy theorem. So let's take a look at that theorem. So you might want to pause the video here and read this statement a couple of times, but according to the theorem, when work is done on a system and the only change in the system is in its speed, then the net work done on the system is equal to the change in kinetic energy of the system. It's a bit of a mouthful, but maybe if we write out the formula for this work kinetic energy theorem, things will start to make sense. So let's go ahead and do that. And so here it is in equation form. Again, the external work done on the system is equal to the system's change in kinetic energy. Now, in this case, our system is the two pucks, each of which has a mass of m. And we can see that there is this external force being applied to the system that is marked F. Now, we also recall that external work would be equal to that force multiplied by the displacement that our system undergoes. And what we want to do is try to make sense of that displacement in this diagram because that turns out to be the key to part A. Now we can see that the center of mass of the system would lie right between the two pucks. So we can mark that with a little orange dot here. And then the center of mass travels in a straight line until it reaches this position right here. And so we can mark that with an orange dot as well. Now that orange line is actually going to represent the displacement that we need to plug in to our work kinetic energy theorem. But let's notice that that displacement is not the same as the displacement marked D in the diagram. So we have to come up with an expression for the length of this orange line. And so maybe for now we can actually just look at it as D of the center of mass, which is marked here in the diagram. So again, our goal is to find that displacement. Well, we know that the length of the string is indicated by the letter L. And if we look carefully, the way that the string is pinched by the force, we can see that this distance right here would not be L, but it would be half of L because this represents half of the rope. And so that distance could be marked as L divided by two. Now it's not quite a straight line distance, but for the sake of simplicity, we can assume that it is a straight line distance. And so hopefully we can see that the following equation would hold true. If we took the distance, or the displacement, excuse me, of the center of mass, which again is that orange line right here, and then added the L divided by two, that would amount to the total displacement of the force indicated by the letter D in the diagram. So again, we're simply adding the length of this orange line plus L divided by two to get this entire displacement that's marked D. What we want to do is solve this for the displacement of the center of mass. So we can simply subtract L divided by two from both sides of the equation. And then we can see that the displacement of the center of mass is equal to D minus L divided by two. This is the displacement that we want to plug into our work kinetic energy theorem because we're using that theorem as it applies to the center of mass of our system. So that's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and we'll plug in the displacement of the center of mass of our system. Now on the other side, we know that the final kinetic energy would be one half times the mass multiplied by the final velocity squared. Now for the mass, we have to be careful because the total mass of our system is actually 2m. So why don't we back up and instead of calling it m, we're going to have to call it 2m. And then again, multiply by the final velocity squared. Presumably, for the initial kinetic energy, the initial velocity of these pucks was zero. And that means that the initial kinetic energy is going to be equal zero. So we'll make sure that we have that here. Now, algebraically, we can see that the 1 half multiplied by 2 is going to cancel. And so on the right-hand side, we would be left with m times the final velocity squared. Remember, part A wants us to determine the final velocity in terms of all these variables. So what we're going to do is actually divide both sides of this equation by the mass m. And that way it cancels out on the right-hand side. And then we're left with a bit of a complex fraction, a fraction within a fraction. So perhaps one way of resolving that is to multiply the denominator by two, so long as we multiply the numerator by two as well. And what we can do is actually distribute that two into the term in parentheses. 
And so if we do that, we're going to be left with f multiplied by 2d minus, and then when we multiply the l divided by 2 by 2, those 2s will cancel, so it will just become l here. And this is over 2m. And this is still set equal to the final velocity squared. We can finally take the square root of both sides. And of course, the square root of v squared is just going to be v. And so we have come up with an expression for the final velocity of the center of mass of our system in terms of those variables. So this is the correct answer to part A. Now on to part B, but before we answer that, let's just remind ourselves that the work that was done on the center of mass of our system was equal to the force multiplied by the displacement of the center of mass. And we had determined earlier that the displacement of the center of mass was d minus l divided by 2. So that's the work done by the center of mass. But there's another work that is displayed in the diagram, and that is the work that we might call the total work done by the force. Now the total work done by the force is going to equal that force multiplied by the entire displacement. And again, the entire displacement undergone by the force was actually marked by d. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the total amount of work done and we're going to subtract the amount of work done on the center of mass and whatever is left over is going to equal the work that was transformed into internal energy. So perhaps one way of writing that would be as follows. We're going to have the work that was transformed into internal energy and that's going to equal the total work done minus the work that was done in moving the center of mass. And what we can do is actually distribute this minus sign. So we're going to have f times d, it'll become minus f times d, and then this minus and that minus will make a plus f times l divided by 2. And of course the fds will cancel, and that's going to leave us with this expression for the work done that was transformed into internal energy. So this is the correct answer to part B.